And I'm really, as you said, excited to talk about the, the 18 by 275 wire and the torque control. Cases are set up pretty well in, in after the 14 by 0275. So as Todd talked about, Rotational control with a 140275 is now known as phase one of our treatment with Ultima. Phase two is torque control, and that's what we're going to get with the 18 by 0275 wire. So passivity is our friend in passive self ligation. You know, it allows us to um, reduce frictional binding, uh, frictional resistance, and binding. And that's key in lowering the biomechanical load that we deliver to the teeth and to the alveolus. So passivity is our friend. It, it really it makes, makes it work. And I couldn't do cases like this on the left before without extractions, before passive self-ligation, without extractions, without separating the mid-palatal suture. And with passive self-ligation and Dr. Damon's protocols, um, we're able to do cases like that. So that is the beauty of low friction, low force. So where passivity is, passivity is our friend, it all pr also presents challenges for three-dimensional control. My practice was one of the 10 practices involved in the Damon Ultima clinical study uh, where we saw about 196 patients. And I, time constraints being what they are, I've selected two cases that I treated in this, from the study to really uh, give good examples of the torque control after the 18 by 027 wire. Torque selection is key, but don't forget a good percentage of our profession does not use variable torques. Yeah. You know, they're using just standard torques. And we're not going to be talking about the overdrive wires, but we'll allude to those. There are wires that are 19 by 0275 and 20 by 0275 that will allow you to get some control, even with the standard torque brackets. Well, and I think, I think you know, like what you guys are discussing, the key to this system that's so beautifully engineered is that even if you're in a neutral torque bracket, you're going to get to where you want to go. I think that the variable torques get, just get you there faster. Um, right. and you can't really overexpress. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a wonderful design. Um, and if we're trying to increase efficiency and, and engage that torque couple earlier then the variable torque brackets are really going to aid in that. But if, if you are using a neutral torque bracket throughout the bracket line, you're still going to end up with a wonderful torque control and a beautiful finish. Right, well, let's look at that first case that I treated, uh, that I've selected to show, um, patient SV. So here she is pre-treatment, and obviously it's a class two division two malocclusion. It's 110% deep overbite, and so much so, the upper incisors are so retroclined that she is stripping the tissue away from the lower incisors. It doesn't show on that, but uh, she has a thin biotype. Just looking at the uh, film, you can see it's a very low angle case, brachyfacial, and you can see the degree of retroclination of those upper incisors. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us to get the proper torque on those incisors, and more importantly, to hold it while we're running the class two mechanics. And Tom, you know, the curve of speed on that film too. I mean, I, I noticed that on that lower, that's a whopping curve of speed there. <laughs> it is, and I'm gonna show you how we open this bite. So here's the torques that I selected. I picked high torque upper canine to canine and lower canines because they were tipped in somewhat. Now with class two mechanics, we would typically put low torque brackets on the lower incisors. I elected not to do so in this case because of the thin biotype and the stripping of tissue caused by the upper incisors on the lower. So looking at the treatment sequence, we won't spend a whole bunch of time with this, but you know, we start out as we normally do with our, our round copper night tie wires. And in this case, I started with short class two quail, Ormco quail elastics, which are 3 16 two ounce. Now, Dr. Damon talks about judicious use of early elastics. And I agree with that. I don't use them in every case, but I, I did in this case, and we'll show you, you know, my rationale in another slide. So I went from the round wires into our 14 by 0275 Ultima wire. And I just made the progression up to the 018 by 0275. I started uh, short class two rabbits at that point, which are a little bit stronger than the quails. When I finally get to my 18 by 027 wires in both arches, I did full zebras rather than shorties, which are the five sixteenths, four and a half ounces. We continued elastics through the remainder of the treatment. In my progress, pano and repo, I did drop down a wire because I repositioned a few brackets. Got right back into my 18 by 0275 steels, and I continued elastics until we finished the case. All right, let's look at the initial bonding. So it's a very deep bite, 110%. It's a very low angle. And I put these very large um, anterior bite turbos on the lingual of the upper incisors. 
And you can see in the uh, photograph on the right, she's biting together and we have really disarticulated her. So you can imagine it's hard to live your life when you have that degree of disarticulation and eating and so forth. So I did tell the patient and the parents, look, if you can't tolerate these, I will take them off. But if you can hang in there for a little bit, it's going to really, we'll, we'll be able to do things a lot quicker mechanically. And you can see that with the disarticulation on the right, we've got her in the shorty uh, class two quails. And what we're trying to do here is not so much class two correction, but erupt posterior teeth. So as you know, in a brachyfacial case in that lower deep curve of speed, that's exactly what we want to do is erupt posterior teeth. Now, Todd mentioned that we started this study, you know, in the midst of the pandemic. So this case was started um, in February, uh, right before the pandemic started. And then I had about an almost a 10 week shutdown. Mm. So appointment number one was at May 11th. And you can see in one appointment, I virtually corrected that 110% deep overbite in this div two. So that's why I judiciously chose to use early class two uh, elastics in this case. And Tom, uh, you know, thanks for pointing out with that 110% overbite, we can really see I now understand because I would have put low torque on that lower two to two. I can see why you put the neutral because of that thin biotype. Um, now we can really see that in that appointment one. Exactly. With the thin biotype and roots forward to begin with, I was just hesitant to put a little more yeah. labial root torque on those lower incisors. All right. So there's, there's one appointment um, correction of the deep overbite. So what we want to show, obviously, my part of the lecture is showing torque control with the 18 by 275. So what I did was four weeks after my patients had been in the 18 by 275s, we took some pictures to take a look at how it compared to the original torque. So here she is at that point, a month after the 18 by 275 has been in. And I want to show you the initial bonding on the left and the 18 by 0275 on the right. You can see the degree of torque um, that we've achieved by the time we've gotten out of that wire. And if we zoom in and you take a really good look, let your eye go back and forth between the initial bonding on the left and the 0275 on the right. You can really see, you know, bracket wire relationships and the degree of torque that we got um, after this wire. The key is the combi wire, as Dr. Damon calls, half round and half rectangular, um, hitting those torque couples um, and and really expressing the torque. So here she is when we finish the case, and you can see the lower uh, thin biotype. Um, I wasn't sure if I would flare the lower incisors with the class two mechanics. I really did not maintain them about where they were. All right, so this case was done in nine working appointments in 11 months. And don't forget, this was during the pandemic, so that 11 months includes two and a half months of interruption uh, for, for our shutdown. That's, that's, that's pretty, it's just impressive. I mean, when you, when you see that the key to that case is truly the upper incisor torque position, and you look at her finished case, um, it's, you know, we all know we can get there. It's just how long would we normally quote that patient as far as time? You know, we know that we're going to take a long time in the round wire phase. We're going to have to wait for torque expression. So to see where you were able to go from point A to point B, irregardless of, of the shutdown in 11 months, uh, is, is really showing the, the, the power of, of, the, of that third dimension of torque control in this case. I don't know if you agree with that, Todd, but that's it's quite amazing. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really glad Tom showed that class 2 div 2 case uh, here because, as you remember mine, I did those open coils, created a lot of space. I couldn't have done this case in, in 11 months because I don't bond the lower. But after seeing that blessing Tom got just by that patient being gone for two and a half months, I mean, I'm just, that that is just amazing. Yeah. Yep. So it, it, that was key. She was able to tolerate those turbos. And if she didn't, then it would have not probably yeah. treated in 11 months. Now, we did not have the overdrive wires at the time we did this part of the study, which were the 19 by 0275s and the 20 by 0275s. Could I have gotten a little more torque on the upper incisors? Probably. Um, I'm not a wire bender. I'm a, I'd rather position, reposition brackets than bend wires um, or select the right torques. Um, so, you know, maybe I would have put an overdrive wire in there at the end to get a little more torque on the upper incisors. 
Well, Tom, I would say that one thing that that I'm learning with this is that as we start to progress through our um, Ultima wires, it's giving me a much clearer picture on what bracket I should put on to express that that torque. So, you know, I was a little bit more cautious in the beginning and using neutral torque on on certain teeth. And what I really found was, you know, midway through, we were like, hey, let's take that off and put a procline torque on because we know that we're getting that torque expression and we want to see a little bit more of it. So, you know, it is a learning curve. We went back and treated the cases that we've treated initially. We would probably have a much different torque selection from the beginning, or like you said, we would use the tools that Ormco's giving us as far as the wires. And I'll talk about that a little bit at the end about these uh, little bit, we're calling them overdrive wires that allow for more torque expression. But nonetheless, I mean, we're all beating ourselves up, but it really just very impressive. Well, thanks. That was case number one. Let's look at case number two that I, I selected here. So at first blush, this case doesn't look like a particularly difficult case, right? You know, why are you showing this one? Um, but it is a subtly very difficult case, probably much more difficult than the first case we showed. You know, looking at some numbers, what I want to show here is that the lower incisor is almost at 99 to mandibular plane. So we've already got some degree of, of compensation in this class two case uh, with the lower incisor. So again, is this an easy case for PSL? Well, we've got a half cusp plus class two. There's no overjet. I've got small upper laterals. We've got lower incisor compensation. And to make it matters worse, I've got to pull class two mechanics at the same time. So without precise torque control, it's, it'll be very challenging to finish this case to a class one. I think you'd all agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, think of what we used to do, um, Todd and Mike, in these cases, you know, strip the lower incisors to tuck them back a little bit to create overjet. Maybe have the dentist bond the upper smaller laterals to get us some more overjet, uh, bending torque into the wire with an indeterminate amount of force when we do that. You know, all the things that we used to do to, to, to work hard to get these types of cases finished. So let's look at torque selection. It's a class two case. So I've got um, procline or, or high torque brackets on the upper incisors, retrocline or low torque on the lower incisors. I felt the canines were tipped in a bit, so I put high torque uh, brackets on the lower canines. Again, the wire sequence, nothing new here. It's starting with the round, rec, uh, round uh, copper night tie wires and working our way through our 14 by 0275s, 18 by 0275 copper night ties, and eventually to our 18 uh, by 0275 stainless steel uh, Ultima wires. So I did place some accentuated curve of speed in the upper arch and, and, and reverse curve in the lower because the bite was a little bit deep. We continued elastics and I debanded the case. So let's take a look at what happened after the 18 by 027 wire, 0275 wire. So here he is, the wire had been in in four weeks and uh, this is how we're shaping up. This case, I did have small turbos on the occlusal surfaces of the upper first molars in this case. So here we are, initial bonding left and 18 by 0275 Ultima wire copper night tie on the right. So let your eye go back and forth between these two circles initial bonding, and you can see, if you go back and forth, you can appreciate the degree of torque that we have achieved in this 18 by 0275 wire, and also getting a little bit of overjet as well, which is gonna help us in our class two correction. All right, again, you get a sense of the degree of torque that we've achieved with that wire. And if we zoom in, you can, again, let your eye go back and forth between initial bonding left and 18 by 0275 on the right, and you can see the torque expression on those teeth. More importantly, we've got to hold that torque couple while we're running our class two mechanics, because that's going to tend to want to dump those teeth on us. So here he is finished up, you know, nice result. Wow. Yeah. 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 Really nice. And we took that, you know, half cusp plus um, class two with no overjet and small laterals and, you know, compensated lower incisors, and we were able to get home to class one. And what, what amazed me was we were able to do it in eight working appointments in 11 and a half months, which again included a two month plus interruption because of the pandemic shutdown. So I don't think I could have done that with prior, you know, iterations of our passive self ligation appliance, which brings to a, me to a little pearl that we can talk about with this case too. So we've got slightly small upper incisors, maxillary lateral incisors. 
And the pretreatment panel showed that they were very upright. So if we go back to Larry Andrews, Six Keys to Occlusion 101, incisors occupy more mesial distal space when they're angled properly. So if we just take those upright laterals and we get the proper angulation, the proper distal root tip, we're going to make them appear bigger and take up more space in the arch, which helps us in this case that is lacking an overjet. So you can see when we finish the case, better angulation. And it brings me to my close. You know, I want to quote a colleague and friend, Mark Olson. You know, he wrote in one of the articles he wrote for JCO, he talked about acceleration and efficiency. And he said of acceleration, it means increasing the rate of progression toward a specific goal. He said efficiency means employing the least possible effort to progress toward that end goal. And this is the true definition of simplification. And he really says it best when he says, our goal as orthodontists should be to increase efficiency rather than to accelerate treatment. Because if efficiency is improved, accelerated treatment will follow. And I can find really no truer summary of what we're able to do with, uh, with, with the Damon Ultima system. And if we can do this on a consistent and repeatable basis, uh, in a predictable basis, our practices and our profession will thrive.